Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to Shift Society. As always, my name is PJ and welcome to the channel. As you guys seen in the last video, I actually picked up a 2000 FRC to replace the Mustang that I sold. Surprisingly enough, nobody was really, really upset that I got rid of the Mustang, but actually kind of stoked that I got another C5. As I promised in the last video, I will give you everything that I found wrong with this car so far. Like I said, I did give $12,000 for this car. Um, I will do the mods and all of the good in the next video but everybody asked me hey how did you get a somewhat built car so cheap in this current market i'm going to go ahead and dive into everything some stuff is little stuff but stuff that's wrong nonetheless and some of the other stuff is just stuff that we're going to fix over time let me go ahead and get started item number one that i found wrong with this car and it's not really an item as much as we need to adjust on this hood quite a bit this is an aftermarket cow hood but it is not fitting the best in the world. Um, some of the panel gaps are a little bit bigger than what they are on factory. And I talked to a few people that actually had this hood and they said with some adjustment, we can actually get it pretty much back to where it needs to be. From afar, you can't tell anything is wrong with it. But once you see the car in person, uh, it becomes a little more prevalent that it doesn't fit as good as what I think it should. Item number two that is wrong with this car, and it's really not a problem, are these. I haven't gotten to look if they actually cut into the body or if these are the stick-on ones, but regardless, these belong on a C5Z, and I don't see the brake ducts behind it so they are not functional so it's one of those things that yeah it looks good but i feel like the car is pretending to be something it's not however i think a lot of hard top people um, especially with the frc uh, 99 2000s do put those scoops on there but most of them actually put the ducks so if we keep those i will make those functional Again, nothing wrong with them. I just, I don't like stick on vents. If that's actually cut into the body where I can put a duct to make it functional, great. If not, oh well. All right, guys, for the third thing that I found was wrong, some of the fender gaps and stuff are not on there the best. It is what it is. That is gonna be addressed as well. On the other side, it's kind of same way, except I think they actually have this side somewhat bolted down. Um, the other side is not, so that is one of the things that was wrong. That's not a big deal, but is wrong with the car nonetheless. All right, guys, for the fourth thing that's wrong with this, staying on the body. This does have a big crack in the bumper. I'm not exactly sure where this come from, but it does let a lot of airflow in. But anyway, as you can see, it is busted on the front bumper. So to get that 100% mint, we're either going to have to try to plastic weld that piece or we're going to have to get a new bumper. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that decision soon. We have to make that decision soon. And while we're on the outside of the car, issue number five, which is one of the biggest issues on this car that is currently wrong. And that is the condition of the wrap. Now, this wrap has been on here for a little while. Not sure if a shop did it or what but as you can see the wrap is failing in a lot of different places they didn't wrap this area at all i guess they left the mirrors on cut it and tried to put it around there i did unwrap the mirrors um, because the car is going to be unwrapped so that's why this isn't a huge issue but it's an issue right now. Like I said, I don't know if they professionally wrapped this, but they didn't even take off the emblem. This front bumper's pewter, and you can see the pewter behind it. This side is even worse. As you can see, it's failing there. It's really, really failing in here. It looks like they just cut up some spare pieces of vinyl and stuck them on there. Same thing over here. At least they did try to patch this piece, as on the other side, they did not. And the rest of the car doesn't look that bad other than just being absolutely filthy but it's supposed to rain again so i didn't even bother washing it for this video because it's stuff that's wrong so if you want to throw in you know like a 5.5 that the car is filthy you can go ahead and do that what are these things all over this car it's the second one that's on the car anyway let me give you a little bit of scenic west virginia sunset here we are where i usually come to do car reveals which is the logan county airport here in logan west virginia i love coming up here at sunset especially to shoot some pictures of the car the thumbnail is probably going to be from the mini photo shoot that i just did um because before i got up here i took advantage of the sunset and we took a bunch of pictures so anyway now we're going to move on to the inside of the car on the inside another big thing that is kind of wrong i really don't know if this is how this came or not but 
the power seat controls are just on this little weird remote and it's just kind of stuck down in the floor i don't know if this is the seats that came with this car i know these are c5 seats i believe my buddy brandon that has my old c5 uh, the frc car the allo one had different seats and my c5 coupe had different seats so i don't know if that's actually factory seats or not not really an issue but it is something that's kind of wrong that i am going to address in the future sitting down inside of the car wear on the steering wheel kind of bad around the bottoms overall not horrible for a 21 year old car but i am nitpicking this car for this video to show you everything that is wrong and why i was kind of able to get it for twelve thousand dollars so one of the major things on the inside of this which is kind of a mechanical issue i guess is this key does not want to turn unless you kind of give it a wiggle and then it finally will that being said I get that good old service column like message. I don't know exactly what I need to fix it. The guy that I bought it off of said something about the first fix was done, but I had to do the rest of them. It didn't always say that. That is a new thing that happened like a week ago. It used to say pull key for 10 seconds or remove key for 10 seconds, I guess then try it again. And I tried to drive the car when it said that and it literally would go about 10 feet and just die, just fall flat on its face and die. That's gone away completely. It hasn't done that since this service service column lock light has came on that i'm gonna have to fix i heard there was like an lm5 or lmc5 module i think that goes down the passenger floorboard and then i think there's a resistor back here you can do that i think eliminates those problems for good that being said i'm not sure i have to do some more research that is one of the biggest problems i'm hoping that nothing bad happens i need to do some research on this service column lock um, message to see if there is anything driving wise if i drive it with it saying that they can mess up like i don't want the steering wheel to lock up and me go off of one of these mountains or whatever but that is a major issue and that's one of the biggest issues however when you start the car we can clear that message no problem but the ac now it is three or four weeks into summer and it gets like 95 to 100 degrees here in west virginia in the summer the humidity is horrible because like they always say, it's not the heat, it's the humidity that gets you. But the AC, something is up with it. It's weird because once you hit this, one, you can hear, I think it's the compressor whining, but when you actually like try to drive this car with this on, just try to listen to this whine. It almost sounds like a root style supercharger. wrong and I've got some mixed reviews on it it's a very period correct I will say that is <laughs> this radio like I this is some straight out of Fast and Furious 1 type stuff that yeah we've got this I kind of want to leave it in here for nostalgia purposes because I know you can get that cool like double den set up for in here but there's just something about the old school watching the you know screen come out and flip up type of deal that is it's i don't know it's it's kind of want to get demonetized but it's just kind of cool I, I don't know i'll probably keep this in here just for nostalgia's sake but again some people say like you know that's something wrong with this car that it needs something newer I kind of dig it. So I'll put that on the problem list just because some other people said that it's a problem. Now, why the car is running, that's gonna be, I don't even know what number we're on. So I'll say it's seven. Yeah, I don't I don't really know, eight, something like that. But it has a horrible leak up under this car. I'm not sure if that translates through over camera very well, but when you're driving it, it is pretty daggone loud and that's something i'm gonna have to fix now when i picked this car up 
I didn't exactly realize how low this car sat, especially because the clamps on the X-Pipe are turned upside down. So the square part is actually facing down, which takes about an inch of ground clearance off of this car. And we was pulling into a gas station and it was kind of something like this, but it had like the sewer lid stuck up in the middle of it. So it was about four inches up off the ground. Well, I hit that, one of those clamps caught that and then it's been doing that ever since. So I assume that it's probably just popped that off a little bit. Uh, some welding or a new clamp can probably fix that. Another thing that's wrong on this car is the hood latch. It doesn't really want to pop this driver's side. You kind of have to pull it and pop the hood at the same time with two hands. Take your right hand and pull the lever. Take your left hand and pop the hood up. This, this, I'm gonna count this as a problem. This is not my thing, but everybody seems to love this thing. Anyway, that's, that's not, I'm not gonna put that on the problem list, but that, I don't, I don't know about that. Now, another problem that I'm probably gonna have to address that I don't really know if it's a problem, but I'm probably gonna go to my boys at BTR and get the Trunnion upgrade on this car because if you can listen. There's quite a bit of valve train chatter on this thing and it is like 114, 115,000 miles on this car and I don't exactly know everything that was done in maintenance and all that on this car because it did change hands um, about three or four times in a very short period of time. So I'm gonna have to go through the car because there is a race coming up, like I said in the other video. It's July 24th at Owingsville, Kentucky. It's I-64 Motorflex, it's a real street revolution. Uh, Kentucky Waterfall something bash. Anyway, there's two races. One is regular drag strip racing. The second is back of the track, no prep. We're probably gonna do both. Don't know what class we're gonna run, but we're gonna do some test and tune and figure that out. So let me go ahead and shut the car off. So the last thing I'm going to go over is something that not the previous owner or even the one before him, but the guy that originally put this car together disclosed to me after I bought the car. Like I said in the other video, it has been wrecked. This is the biggest thing that is wrong with this car, really. Um, the one that only really concerns me because I don't know what damage is actually up under it. Um, what I could see, I didn't see any damage whatsoever. And he told me that it was pretty much just cosmetic, that it was this bumper, which is why this is a pewter bumper on a black car. I think, I think this door is still black. I think this quarter panel is pewter. This rear bumper is white. And I think that they have done, done some kind of primer work in this area, because if you look, you can see primer overspray in here. And if you peel the wrap back, it looks like the door is primered right there. Again, I'm not too concerned about this wrap because hopefully it is wrapped before the Royal Street Le Revolution shootout. Um, if you follow any of the social medias, you've already seen hints of what wrap this is going to get. And a lot of people are probably going to hate the wrap, to be honest with you. It's something that I'll just say fits the name of this car, which is Black Ops. If the car was completely black underneath still, I would probably just peel the car and do some paint correction and run the car solid black. However, it is not. It does have, like I said, the different color bumper, quarter panel um, bumper in the rear. Everything else I think is black and it's been painted somewhat recently because I do have a receipt for that. They paid like four grand to have the car repainted and then it hit a guardrail like a couple months later. So guys, that is the tour of the natives of the C5 FRC that we picked up. All of these problems will be addressed in future videos. I just wanted to show you guys a baseline of what we're starting with, but I will go over all of the goodies that's on the card in the next next video but for now that is the negative on it i'll give you a good walk around of it because i didn't really show too much of the car on that last video when we revealed it just kind of a little bit of an overview but there's a full walk around of it 
The car drives and handles phenomenally. And I'm also gonna play with that N2 MB two-step, I guess. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you know, it. you didn't take this as just me complaining about everything on the car. Everybody was asking me on social media, how did I get it so cheap in this market with relatively low miles for the year and some mods? Because for some reason, the market has just went stupid. It's hyperinflated right now. And this is a pretty daggone good deal given everything that was done to it. So don't take this video as me nagging that anything was wrong with this car. When I checked it out, I seen all of the little imperfections and stuff that I would need to fix. And if you've seen the videos of Blucifer, the blue C6 Corvette, what how it went from that really beat up orange base C6 into what it is now, you'll kind of understand that I, I don't care to take on a challenge on uh, building a car. So we are going to get this car rewrapped soon. Uh, and then it should be good to really take to the track. I'm gonna get, take it out to Mexico, make some draggy passes, kind of see where we're at because I'm gonna run one of the index classes over there, there, but I'm really going just to test and tune. But if it looks like we can be competitive, we may hop in that class. So guys, if you like this video, if you like the channel, if you like the content, if you like the vets, hit that big thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel as always, follow all the social medias down in the description below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.